right on the dotted line. Let's build it down for your freedom ring and patriotic voices say red, white, and blue. Never give up. You represent America. Here are some exciting scenes from today's episode of Liberty's Kids. Lee wishes you replaced by himself. A victory would practically guarantee that your name would be blackened. The objective of this war is not sparing my reputation. It is freedom. The British have been in control of this war from the outset. General Green, how many battles have you won? Or for that matter, has our commander-in-chief? Your opposition to this attack borders on treachery. As spring brings with it its promise of new beginnings, I am thrilled that America and France are now allies. I'm certain this new alliance will bring peace. The British will have no stomach for being drawn into a world war with France. However, I have a grave concern. So grave that I have sent this note by secret messenger to ensure its safe arrival. The Minister of France will arrive on United States shores in a month. We must greet him as one united nation, not 13 separate states. Please convey my deepest sense of urgency to Henry Lawrence and the other members of Congress to set aside their differences and speak with a strong, united voice. Virginia's arguments make no sense. Maryland's arguments are madness. Their voices might not be united, but they are strong. Gentlemen, three years have passed since Benjamin Franklin wrote a draft of these Articles of Confederation, and we still cannot find the resolve to pass them. As president of this Congress, I find this shameful. Hear, hear. We'll approve them when they are fair. Mr. Chase is being unreasonable. Mr. Lee is being ridiculous! Excuse me, Mr. Lawrence. This just arrived. News from Dr. Franklin in France. The French minister will arrive in less than one month. He must see us as a united nation, or our critical alliance with France may not stand. Gentlemen, our very freedom is at stake. I knew this was going to happen. Listen to me. I say, Maryland, your time has come. I sometimes wish Congress were more like the army. One person gives orders, and others follow without question. Sort of like having a king. Huh? Why not identify the specific points of contention and address them one by one? I second that motion! Virginia and Maryland agree? It's a miracle. If you're going to be my assistant, you've got to learn to be on time and to not run into the journalist. Sorry, what did I miss? See those women over there? They're Philadelphia washerwomen and spies for General Washington. Real spies! They say the British officers have demanded their laundry by next week whether it's finished or not. You know what that means. They don't care if they wear dirty clothes. 
No, it means the British are finally withdrawing from Philadelphia. This is a huge story for me. Sure is, but what happens to the spies when you write it? Ladies, you have done your country a great service. Thank you. We have before us a great opportunity. Mr. Hamilton, call a war council for this afternoon. Yes, sir. Wow, did you see that? Sure. General Washington is working with the Wappinger to form an Indian company to fight the British. I was talking about his feathers. Excusez-moi, but those are the most wonderful feathers I have ever seen. I earned them in a tribal contest. You have to win them in a contest? These, yes. But there are plenty of other turkey feathers around. All you have to do is catch a turkey and pluck a feather. Gentlemen, we have identified the three major issues that block our ratification of the Articles of Confederation. One, how to divide the expenses of a central government among the different states. It's absurd! A state like mine, Maryland, with limited land and resources, cannot be expected to pay the same for this war as Lee's Virginia, which claims vastly more territory and the right to expand! Vastly more territory? Well said! You're ridiculous! Where are you going? Outside. It's too windy in here. Turkey, 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 turkey. Not fair. You're supposed to hold still. In spite of the British withdrawal from Philadelphia, and in spite of their slow retreat, I can hardly credit your desire to attack them, General. <laughs> Only a fool would seriously consider such a move. Sir, you are speaking to your... Oh, it's tantalizing to be sure, but it's exactly what they want us to do. Right, Achilles. Let's not deceive ourselves. The British have been in control of this war from the outset. I suppose that's why they've replaced General Howe with General Clinton. It is hardly for us to second-guess the greatest army in the world. Clinton is an able soldier with many a victory to his credit. General Green, how many battles have you won? Or, for that matter, has our commander-in-chief? Sir, you're not going to accept these outrageous slurs on your honor. American soldier does best is run away. General Washington wisely knows this. No doubt will soon recognize the folly of mounting any sort of attack. So we are to do nothing and waste this golden opportunity to strike at our foe? Sadly, Monsieur Lafayette, it is not for me, the most experienced soldier here, to make that decision. Gentlemen, I suggest we adjourn for a while so that I might consider your counsel. <laughs> Whose side is General Lee on, anyway? I'm starting to wonder why we bought him out of British custody. At least we could have left behind his poodles. They shame their French blood. <laughs> I finally found that dumb one. Just a little further. <laughs> That's an unusual way to hunt turkey. Uh, it's how you tell a smart one from a dumb one. The turkey or the hunter? Hunter, I'm afraid. I'm Henri. 
Abraham Nimham, I could teach you an easier way to hunt turkey. The way of my people, the Wappinger. That would be great! Oni, uh, could you get me down first? Since we have failed to resolve the issue of how to split federal expenses, could we at least agree on how each state is to be represented in Congress? We have a perfectly adequate system now. One state, one vote. Are there any objections to the present arrangement? If they can agree on this, maybe they can agree on the other points. Then we are in accord. Aye! Aye. Finally. Let's push on to the next issue. Mr. President, Maryland insists that General Washington deliver us a victory on the field of battle. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? A victory would impress the French more than any act this Congress might pass. Mr. Chase, this Congress can't even agree on whether or not Washington is worthy of his command. Let us get back to the business at hand. He speaks the truth! Never mind Washington, let's get to the articles! Leave him alone to do his job and let's do ours. Some delegates don't believe in General Washington? All of them could use more of the General's determination to unite this country. Treating column is eight to ten miles long? Yes, and despite the heat, they wear wool uniforms and carry full packs. They are struggling. Gentlemen, I believe we should seize this opportunity to strike the enemy while he is most vulnerable. What do you say? We could easily attack their flank and rear without getting into a full-blown battle. We'll never have a chance like this again. I say we fight! General Lee? I am passionately opposed to such an action. <gasps> Lee, your opposition to this attack borders on treachery. I'm sorry, sir, no. It's logic. High risk disaster when a French alliance is so near to hand. Because we must show the French we are worthy of an alliance, sir. And with a victory, deal the British a double blow. We shall attack. That is my decision, and it is final. General, command of the striking force is yours. Fifteen hundred men. I, I... I'm sorry. I must refuse. <laughs> Fifteen hundred men. Paltry number. I had to turn it down on principle. Isn't that so, Achilles? <laughs> Washington wouldn't dare engage the enemy without me. He knows that I am his military superior. He's not fit to command a sergeant guard. No, he won't move forward without me. If he does, it will be the end of it. We'll have 1,500 men, and if we come up on their flank, we'll be able to take them over. You mustn't breathe a word to anyone. These are military secrets. My dear Marquis, if Lee stays true to his conviction and refuses to lead this attack, I'll need you to step in. Your Excellency, I'll begin drawing up plans immediately. I've called this private meeting so that we three might reach an agreement about the most difficult issue before us. Then we can talk to the others. The states with western territories like Maryland will be asked to hand them over to the central government. What will we get in return? 
We can't expect either side to be completely happy, Samuel. You're a sly one, Henry, making it Richard and my responsibility to convince our colleagues. Sam, we must end this impasse. <clears throat> Excuse me for interrupting. Good evening, Miss Phillips. Washington intends to engage the enemy. This is it, gentlemen. Washington must win this battle. Hurry, Henri. They're reviewing the battle plans. Whoa, excuse us. <laughs> I understand that you've placed 5,000 men under the command of a 20-year-old boy. Not a boy, sir. The Marquis de Lafayette. Half the army. I am insulted, sir. General, you turned down the command. I disapproved of the strategy. Nevertheless, my honor requires that I now take charge of what has become a major engagement. You are entitled to the command, General. It is yours if you want it. We'll attack tomorrow at dawn, concentrating horse and battery on the British west flank at Monmouth. <laughs> I suspected he'd come around. Let's hope he fights as fiercely on the field as he does at headquarters. General Lee? I have been charged by Washington to take over here. I'll require a full accounting of your forces, cavalry, artillery, and infantry. Certainement. And I can show you my plans. I have no use for your plans. Of course. You have your own. No. To draw up plans is pointless, as the enemy is on the march. I shall improvise my strategy in response to his movements. Uh... Our forces are now positioned to give Lee complete support. Gentlemen, it has begun. <gasps> Look at all those feathers! One of you dropped me a feather! Henri, come back here! We need to stay with... Henri! Henri! Where are you? <laughs> Henri, come on! Pfeiffer, where are you going? Our troops are in retreat, sir. He's telling the truth. Look! Yeah! Yeah! Henri! You're lucky it wasn't your life. There's General Poodles. General Lee, what's he doing here? Look, Gregor! Lee, what on this earth are you about? I have ordered a general retreat. You coward! That is contrary to my orders. Co coward? The soldiers, your soldiers, we're out of control, constantly disobeying me. I found myself in the most extensive plain in America, where such troops as I commanded would be helpless before the enemy horse. And as you well know, I was against this from the start. All this may be true, but you should not have undertaken it unless you intended to go through with it. Open your eyes! These farmers are no match for the British Army. Quit the field, sir. You are relieved of your command. Don't be ridiculous. I'm the only professional soldier you have. I will not suffer you to scorn these worthy men, let alone command them for one minute more. Yeah! Yeah! 
I will not allow us to lose this battle. Take positions behind those hedgerows and hold that ridge. We are through running. <laughs> Washington, what a hero! And what a story! Despite the awful heat, our reorganized troops turned away several enemy assaults. Though the day ended in a draw, the British have learned new respect for the fighting resolve of our army. In your service, General George Washington. <laughs> We remain at a stalemate in our effort to pass the Articles of Confederation. This is the kind of fortitude and discipline we need if we are to become one nation. I can only hope we're capable of it. We can do it! Hear, hear. We are hear, capable! Hear. We can, we can be one nation! Hear, hear. We must unite! In the longest battle of the war so far, our Commander-in-Chief has shown the world he deserves that title. And Washington has agreed, with deep regret, to grant General Lee a court-martial. It's been an exhausting time for soldier... Uh, and civilian alike. But we've all learned that even the best plans are meaningless without the discipline and determination to see them through. Speaking of exhaustion... Zip!